A modern day hero, a traitor, and a criminal. These are just a few of the words being used to describe the person who unveiled the misdoings of the government to the world. For Edward Snowden though, he couldn't just bear knowing the things he discovered and leave it in the dark. He was just an ordinary CIA officer before that. What made him into the public figure that we know today? Will his choices bring him to the right place? Or will it only end badly for him? The biographical thriller movie directed by Oliver Stone begins with a montage of a bustling city. It's the 3rd of June 2013 in Hong Kong, and a pair of journalists looked high and low into the busy crowd of what seems to be a mall. They think their informant must have got cold feet but after a while, he shows up with a Rubik's Cube in hand. This was when documentary filmmaker Laura Poitras and columnist Glenn Greenwald met with Edward Snowden to discuss issues that concern us on a national level perhaps even internationally. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who plays Snowden, brings the pair to his hotel room to begin documenting everything that has led up to this moment. In a flashback to 2004, Snowden tells his experience as a contractor for the NSI and how he's worked for various jobs in the intelligence industry for almost a decade. The scene continues with Snowden working as a candidate for the Special Forces in Georgia. Although he persevered in the extreme environment of the training, he was injured when he landed on his tibia during a drill and fractured them, causing him to be given an administrative release from the military. Snowden's legs have been fractured for weeks, according to the doctor who examined him, but he has just recently suffered a more catastrophic injury. He tells Snowden that if he lands on his legs again, the bones will crumble to powder. Snowden began training for a job at the Central Intelligence Agency in 2006. He enrolled in a class taught by Corbin O'Brien himself. Corbin was the senior officer who interviewed him initially and risked accepting Snowden despite his insufficient answers. One of Snowden's first exams is solving a problem using a sequence. They were each challenged with establishing a covert communications network in their hometown, then dismantling it and restoring it in eight hours or less, with the average duration being five hours. Snowden is the first to finish, and O'Brien double-checks his work to discover where he went wrong since he was in disbelief. Snowden states that he resolved this difficulty by leaving the sequence to O'Brien's surprise, but also the rest of the class. Snowden was also able to befriend a professor named Hank Forrester, who he met during his first day and seems to be considerably more influential to Snowden than O'Brien. In addition to his job, Snowden has been chatting with a lady named Lindsay Mills online. They ultimately meet up and take a walk around the park one day. Lindsay photographs Snowden numerous times and exposes Snowden. It seems that she knows what it means to work for the State Department. They then end up having their first kiss after a banter regarding their political concepts that are diametrically contrasted. Back at his classes, they were lectured about the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which permits warrant requests to be authorized by a panel of judges appointed by the Chief Justice, thereby bypassing the Americans' Fourth Amendment rights. Corbin and Snowden are then seen walking along campus perimeters where it is revealed that Corbin doesn't want to send the young man to the Middle East. Given that Snowden was one of their brightest, they didn't want to send him over a temporary war abroad when he could be preventing the country from becoming crushed in cyberspace. Snowden, Poitras, and Greenwald are joined in the current day of June 4, 2013, in Hong Kong by Ewan Mac Askell, an intelligence correspondent for The Guardian. Ewan begins to interrogate him immediately about his validity. Snowden senses his hesitancy and is puzzled by his intentions. He reassures Ewan that there's nothing more in it for him other than being able to transmit the confidential knowledge that he's obtained from his work at the CIA. As he said, the people can decide whether I'm wrong or there's something going on inside the government that's really wrong. With respect to the story that Snowden is telling them, Mac Askell reports to editor Janine Gibson. In 2007, Snowden is stationed in Geneva, Switzerland, to ensure computer network security as a part of the diplomatic cover. Lindsay decides to accompany him on his journey. He meets with a CIA operative, who walks him through the steps of his mission. He is then met with Gabriel Saul, an experienced expert in electronic surveillance who shows him XKEYSCORE which allows them to search through data in the whole kingdom. As Gabriel puts it, Snowden begins to question the mission's ethical implications. Snowden and Lindsay are at a reception attended by a lot of ambassadors and other prominent people. He was given a mission by his superior to track down a financier for spying reasons. Snowden has his chance with a big-time financier named Marwan al Kermani with the aid of Lindsay. Later, Snowden discovers through his colleague Gabriel that al Kermani's name is being searched up to obtain personal information on him and that the CIA is creating a program that allows them to spy on individuals through lenses even when they are not being used. 
Snowden and Gabriel learn that Al Kermani's daughter is with a guy who is seeing another woman at the same time and is residing illegally in the United States with his Turkish mother. Later, Snowden and the agent meet with Al Kermani in a hotel. After telling the guys that his daughter's fiancé and his mother had been deported, Al Kermani seems distraught. The man becomes inebriated, and the agent eggs Marwan to return home despite his state. Snowden tries to protest since his superior is intending to corner Marwan by making him drive under the influence of alcohol. Consequently, this would lead to Marwan needing their help later on. Snowden chooses to leave the CIA after witnessing how ethically corrupt the individuals he works with are. As they await the presidential win of Barack Obama, Snowden conveys his thoughts to Lindsay about the fact that he would have been responsible for millions of people's lives. Snowden starts working at Dell as a supervisor on NSI computer system improvements in 2009. Lindsay joins him again when he is posted to an airbase near Tokyo. He works as a subcontractor in Tokyo, where he teaches high officials how to secure their networks against Chinese hackers. Initially, he was under the guise of developing a technology that would allow the government to back up all essential data from the Middle East in the event of an emergency. Dubbed Epic Shelter, Snowden learns of practices used by the NSI and other U.S. government agencies not only in Japan, but in nearly every country with which the U.S. is currently allied. Despite some countries blatantly turning them down for assistance in spying, they continued with the planting of malware in computers that manage government, infrastructure, and financial sectors. This is in preparation for when the day comes that any of these allies end up turning against the U.S., that country can effectively be shut down to retaliate. As easy as a simple lights out for them, Snowden states that most of their work was not entirely about terrorism, rather, it was just an excuse for the economic and social control that his superiors coveted. After the other journalists have left, Snowden continues to chat with Poitras about the job he was given. When they're digging up information about a target, they don't just look for the dirty laundry, they sift through everything that is going in their lives, the people they talk to, their activities, and so on. Snowden was able to conclude that the NSI is tracking every cell phone worldwide, and it doesn't even matter who or where you are. Everybody is just part of a database that is at the disposal of this clandestine organization. When asked about his relationship with Mills, he shares that it ended due to job-related stress. They got into a heated argument about how obsessed Snowden has become about his work in Japan, which was the tipping point for Lindsay. She returned to her hometown in Maryland, but then Snowden decides that he wishes to change for her to be happy once again. Snowden left the NSI and moved to Maryland, where he and Mills maintain their relationship and he gets a consulting post with the CIA. During a hunting trip, O'Brien reveals a counter-attacking Chinese hacking operation in Oahu, Hawaii. This is also where Corbin says the words, secrecy is security, and security is victory. The deputy director of the NSI himself had offered Snowden the job in Hawaii. Snowden shares this news with Lindsay but as he is preparing for dinner, he falls to the ground in a seizure attack. After learning that Snowden suffers from epilepsy, Mills agrees that he should participate in the operation because she feels the environment in Hawaii will be beneficial to his health. In 2013, the journalists face a stumbling block when Janine is hesitant to publish Snowden's materials. Fighting with Greenwald in the process, Mac Askell attempts to keep her on their side so they can finish their task. Back to the flashback story of the main protagonist, Snowden has now started his new work in the tunnel an underground World War II bunker that has been repurposed for massive electronic surveillance and SIGINT operations, where he also got reunited with Gabriel. His co-workers reveal that Epic Shelter is supplying real-time data that aids U.S. drone pilots in executing fatal attacks against terror suspects in Pakistan. Much to their surprise, the program that was helping them create these attacks was created by Snowden himself who is now proposing another project to act as an index for all the information that they have. However, during a hike with Lindsay, Snowden reveals that he has stopped taking his medications. The side effects of these have discouraged him from continuing as it may interfere with his work causing Lindsay to walk out on him out of disbelief. She believes that whatever Snowden is working on and the trajectory that he's in, he always has a chance to turn back. During a party with their friends, Lindsay is seen by Snowden tucking away into a quiet corner with another man. After an incident, Snowden is sent into another epileptic spell and Lindsay rushes towards him. Corbin arranges for a meeting with Snowden where he reprimands him about work. Aside from that, he divulges information about Lindsay's photographer friend which alerts Snowden. He has become a target for the CIA's snooping. Snowden works at Booz Allen Hamilton in 2012. Because of their links to the NSI, Snowden begins to see work that he finds troubling, and he discovers that the government is actively eavesdropping on individuals through a variety of programs, including PRISM. 
When one of the teams causes a problem with their work, Snowden seizes the chance to obtain the papers. While everyone else is busy, Snowden uploads the data onto his hard drive and gets what he needs before anybody notices. After that, he conceals the drive in the square of a Rubik's Cube and tosses it to one of the soldiers at the gate as a kind gesture to avoid raising any suspicions. When he's finished, he walks away proudly. The Guardian publishes Snowden's docs now that his tale is complete. It is quickly sent to news sources all around the world. The NSI controversy makes international headlines. Snowden is forced to flee the nation and say goodbye to Lindsay, and many regard him as a traitor or a hero. The last scene takes place in an auditorium when Snowden appears to an audience of college students through a remote-controlled monitor. He says he would like to return to the United States for a fair trial, but that now is not the time. The moderator inquires as to how his life has altered after he did what he did. The real Edward Snowden then appears, explaining that he has given up a lot of things since becoming a whistleblower, but he has no regrets since he knows deep down that he was doing the right thing. Snowden is applauded by the audience, and the film ends with him beaming. According to the final text, Edward Snowden has been living in hiding in Moscow since 2013, and Lindsay Mills traveled there to join him.